paid, especially, you know, at the end of the day, you're, you're really dealing with a market where um, you do have outside influence uh, that really does control it. So, you know, the narratives with the Trump China trade war, you know, was very difficult because up front, it really looked like they were going to get into a really serious uh, trade war with each other. And then next thing, Trump actually defends China saying, well, you know, we're, we're actually looking at progressing into these chats and we think it's going to be positive. So you kind of had that volatility over the last couple of days. And, you know, it's been causing a lot of difficulty because just like you said, people have been you know, they're, they're trying to get into one side of the position and then the next and then one side and then the next. So, you know, I'll quickly share um, uh, what I'm looking at here. So, you know, what we really look at is, you know, if you if, you know, if you're trading intraday, you know, you're trying to look for short term trades, you know, get in, get out, get in, get out, uh, then, you know, you can work on this, which, you know, if you look in the daily chart, you're going to see a lot of volatility here where uh, you can see in the market over here um, we've literally got these candlesticks that are basically testing the lows consistently and what these are basically showing us is an, a very extreme level of volatility so as these candles spike these massive wicks that are forming i'm sure you can see them um, that's basically showing us that the market doesn't necessarily know where it wants to go even though the overall trend is bearish. So the only thing that we can understand based on this is there is not much uh, upside um, rejection. So what we basically call these wicks, these price wicks is rejection uh, wicks, where the price is testing that level coming all the way down and then pulling back because it just does not want to hold that level. Now, what I can explain to you about this, uh, you know, because I've I've spoken to a lot of people about this kind of trade. I was speaking to one of my students from Australia who's trying to trade the Aussie 200, which is basically like the Australian index. He is going into the same kind of, you know, quandary of should he go long? Should he go short? What should he do next? And what I'm trying to say to him is these, these price wicks that I've put the arrows on, are, what it's basically showing you is that although price is falling, in value, it doesn't want to stay there. Every single time towards the end of all the trading sessions that I've watched over the last couple of days, price moves just like uh, two days ago, price moved all the way back down uh, towards the end of the session at about, you know, round about, you know, six, seven o'clock US time. And then next thing throughout the session wanted to retrace back to the levels it was it was at, you know, two days ago. So what's basically happening is towards the, the US trading session, equities keep closing lower, but then bouncing back. And it's like what we had on Friday last week with the Uber IPO. You know, Uber had nothing to do with it, but um, what happened was equities were down for the entire day and then all of a sudden recovered. And basically what's happening is people keep saying, oh, it's because of the China trade wars. It's because of this, it's because of that, it's not. It's actually because of behavioral price movements. It's because the price itself does not want to go to that level. So although the overall value is uh, the overall opinion people hold about the Dow Jones right now is that there should be a sell off because of the China trade wars and everything. Price itself is rejecting those opinions. So that's why you've got this price constantly pulling back and then bouncing back up and then pulling back and then bouncing back up. So if I go on to, for example, the hourly chart, which, you know, more definitively explains that. Um, so if you have a look here, um, price is basically, as you'll see, okay, so what you can basically see on this level is price is really wanting to uh, move down in these volatile levels. And, and we make use of something, I'm not sure how many videos you've watched of mine or uh, some of my analytical videos, but we make use of something called a Bollinger Band. And what it does is, so going back to your question of, you know, where should you be looking for your entry price? The easiest way to define that is what is the most extreme level the market is sitting at? And you really want to get in on that level because what is price showing us over the last couple of days? No matter what the market says, price wants to stay within this range. Price wants to move 
even though moving bearish, it's bouncing between two points consistently, which we call a price channel. And that's really the trading you're getting involved with right now. So the market is really showing us, okay, well, we don't like what the market is saying. We are going to lose value, but at the same time, we're going to constantly reject this opinion. And that's why you're getting this erratic price movement. I mean, if you have a look at some of the, some of the, um, the bullish moves that the market has made, you know, that I'm just sort of drawing up now, um, you've got these really, really strong bull moves, like incredibly big bull runs. So my opinion to you, my answer to, you know, your question of, you know, you said I'm, I'm, I'm hovering over selling the, the market right now. You, you're hovering over selling a market that is actually rejecting going lower. So the idea is, you know, if the market's only going to travel in two directions, up or down, what does the market say about either direction? And right now, if you look back on the daily chart, you know, like we said, if you've got all of these arrows showing you that price does not want to go lower, then what's the opposite of that? Well, price wants to go higher. So although the overall market opinion is the Dow Jones is losing value right now, price itself is rejecting that idea. So if you want to go and short sell this market, you have to be very, very careful. But if you want to dip by the market, you can have a, a higher level of justification of saying, well, you know, the market might continue to fall a little bit, but the overall opinion is that the market does not want to go lower, um, which is what we've been doing. So last week I triggered some trades on the Dow Jones. Um, <clears throat> I'll quickly have a look here. Uh, last week I triggered some trades in the Dow Jones. I'll, I'll have a look at what the price is. I'm, I'm actually rendering a new video right now. Um, okay, so I'm just quickly going to go on to one of our portfolios. Let's have a look. Um, so the US markets basically on Wednesday last week, I went in for a dip buy um, on the transaction. You can see some of them here. Um, what we are able to notice is that very closely, the market consistently was pulling back to this level. It was losing momentum and then pulling higher, losing momentum, pulling higher. So what we knew, if we went long on the market, then we were basically in a position where we knew, okay, here, so one of the positions I had was at uh, 25,859. Um, which is round about this low level here. So 25, uh, so round about here, 25,859, uh, there we go. So we were coming in round about this level over here in the, in the market. So that was back on the 7th of the 5th, which was last week. So initially we, we went in on this market. So what I was basically looking at here, just to explain to you like how I've made money over the last two weeks on this market. So I can better, you know, explain my, my opinion. Um, so if I go back to the, the 7th or the 5th, we were really trying to come in on this level here because I knew that this downward trend was really forming really strongly. So what we did is we took the Bollinger Bands. I'm not sure if you've used those before. What this basically does is every single time the market pierces beyond this black line, basically we know that the market is oversold. And as the market moved into this level, we had this gap. Now, if you know of gaps, you know, market gaps, the gap will fill. So we knew this gap was probably going to fill. So we went on, in on this level around about this, this, this point over here and we covered. And then later on, what did we do? We went in around this level again. We went in at uh, 25,859 on the 7th at around about 10 in the evening, our time. So it was around about here. And we knew that the second this price were closed, we could see uh, over here that the candlestick formed very long wick, but then rejected the price. But both the Bollinger Bands showed it was oversold, the Stochastic showed it was oversold, the MFI and the CSI, which are the four indicators we use. So we went long and then we covered the position higher up and we made the money we wanted and then we got out. So for example, we could go long here on this level and then we can cover at the previous low uh, that was printed, which was over here. So literally at this previous low, 
uh, where we went long before to cover that gap, we then said, okay, well, we're going to go long here and we're just going to cover that gap. So from the previous low to this new low. And then again, what we did recently, uh, we had a new trade on the 13th or the 5th at 25.315. So 25.315 is more or less around here. So 25.315. And we covered that position at 25.401. So we covered around about up here. So what you can see is what we were doing is we were basically trying to get this position to cover the same sort of price distance this was covering. Because what we did is we basically just measured it. We were measuring, okay, how far was this traveling before the market was breaking back down again? So here's the thing. You, you're trying to short sell a market that is basically showing to us every single time it becomes oversold. It pulls back because if you look to the upside of this Bollinger Band, nothing is piercing to the upper side. Nothing is moving there. So if you look here, there's very close and then there was a gap. Over here it was very close, here it was very close and here it just broke. But very seldomly. Whereas if you look on the downside, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven times it got broken in the same price channel. So what it's showing us is even though price keeps falling in value, it keeps rejecting that level. And now the opinion I have is that because it keeps rejecting this level and spiking back to the upside, it not only gives you a higher probability of succeeding, but at the same time, it's suggesting that price does not want to stay there. So even though price continues to fall, which is the overriding opinion, in the medium to long term, we think price is actually going to recover. So the thing is that it depends on you, what you would prefer. If you want to take a trade in the short term, I'd say be careful about short selling when the market is spiking like that, showing it doesn't want to go lower, even though it is. And then secondly, if you're looking over the long term, you know, a long term sell on the market right now is a bad idea, especially because of the fact that it seems like Trump is, you know, gaining a lot of momentum going into the 2020 elections. Now, we all know what happened in the 2016 elections where, you know, the second Trump was elected, the Dow Jones just took a one direction, you know, rise because people know it's good for business. Now, whatever his agenda is going to be for 2020, running into 2020, if he has a really good chance of winning, um, you're going to see the same thing apply to the Dow Jones. And that is even if any sort of global recession warnings occur, you know, because people are talking now about, you know, the, the yield curve inverting and this and that. It's like, it doesn't even make sense. You know, inflation is low, interest rates are low, econ the economy is growing, employment's at all-time lows. So there's nothing showing us that the economy is going to, you know, crash. So... If anything, this is really an opportunity to go long, but the problem is because the market keeps spiking inside this channel, no one really knows when to actually go long and hold, which is why also for myself, I keep going long and then closing early. Okay. Yeah, yeah that makes sense. That definitely puts it in perspective. And, you know, in terms of the overall um, opinion, you know, it's difficult to try and produce an overall opinion of this, but I, you know, put together this channel as well, you know, over the long term, um, if you have a look here from back in February, February, March, when the market, the entire market sold off, um, you have price consistently testing this level, moving all the way back to the upside. Now, it's difficult to say what exactly this might be because of, um, if I just take a, uh, the, the thing is that if based on what we understand, um, we don't entirely know where the market's going to go. You know, we never, you know, we never, uh, say we know exactly what's going to happen next, but what we can see by this is that the market is constantly testing this channel but constantly gaining value to the upside, which is why we can see that there is this uh, there is this resistance level all the way up at this higher level that keeps on getting tested. Now, 
we could have the market move lower down to um, this level round about over here. Um, the market could move lo much lower. But the thing is that if the overall opinion is the long term will be back up to the previous highs, if you want to take a long term position and make a good amount of money, then maybe wait till then. For now, rather focus on that, you know, short term volatility, get into a position, get out of the position, get into the position, get out of the position. But if you can see that the market overall keeps on spiking to the upside, like really, really fast, it's, it's basically like a bear trap. And if you land up getting in that and you try and sell thinking the market is going to pull back, you could land up with the market actually saying, okay, this level's fine. We're going to return back to previous highs. What I'm trying to say is the over the, the long-term probability is that the market will recover to the previous high. Right. So the, the yeah, whole, um, I, yeah. Oh, sorry. It's, it is the, I was just, as I can actually ask this question after you're done. It's about the Bollinger Band um, indicator. Okay, yeah. Um, so th the whole thing is that, you know, what, what we teach in the academy as well is if the long term, if the long term overview is the market is going to fall in value, don't start going long. If the long term idea is the market's going to fall in value, then go short because you don't want to be buying up a market that the, the, the overall opinion is this market is not going to rise again. But the overall opinion on the Dow Jones is whatever level we fall to, it's probably going to bounce and return back to the previous high. So basically what a lot of the professional traders are doing, including myself, um, you know, I've even spoken with some guys at some of the big banks and stuff. You know, I've even spoken with a Goldman Sachs trader who said, you know, all they want to do is wait for the market to hit a, hit a level that is low enough for the market to go, okay, we've made enough money shorting this market. And then all of the big banks are going to change their direction and go, we're going to buy up again. Because the overall strength of the US economy is that it continues to grow. So there's not necessary. And, and also the biggest problem is if you have a look at the interest rates uh, right now, you know, th they basically have said they don't want to hike interest rates, but they don't want to drop it. But the problem is, is if inflation drops over the next month or two, which I actually think it will, then they're going to have a big problem. And if they drop interest rates, the Dow Jones is going to spike to new highs because that's going to make the dollar cheaper and it's going to make it easier for these uh, corporate uh, giants to get credit, which means because the reason why inflation is so low right now is because all of the corporate giants are doing asset buyback programs. So they are buying back as much of their stock available as possible so that they can get rid of company profits, not pay taxes, but then at the same time have more control over the company, which is why there's no, everything is going to cash. There's not enough credit and credit drives up inflation. So as inflation would drive up, interest rates would hike and the market would pull back. But the problem is everything is pointing to the, the opposite direction, which means I feel over the next couple months, you know, five, six, seven months, the, I think the Dow Jones might even spike towards like 29, 30,000. Um, and that's obviously in my opinion, but based on what I can see, I at least know the market has a, a, at least an 80% chance of recovering back to the previous high. For sure. Yeah, it seems like it's just waiting on, waiting on a new release of um, just some type of trade agreement. Yes, yeah. what it seemed like it's going like it's, it's, it's any type, <laughs> just and, any and, type of trick. Because, but yeah, but the thing is that, it. but the thing is that if you have a look at Trump's agenda, if he doesn't secure the trade agreement with China, it's gonna put a big knock on his campaign. So whatever right. he whatever China looks for, he's probably gonna give it to them, because you know him, he's more interested in the public opinion. Um, at the end of the day, so. He's really going to try and focus on creating something that sounds like a huge win. And you know that the market's reaction to something that sounds great is usually bigger than something that really is great. So, right. you know, it's like during the time with, with North Korea and all of those problems, how it destabilized the global industry. 
you know, just because they were threatening to do something. You know, threatening to do something and doing something are two completely different things. You know, it shouldn't, it shouldn't mean that people start, like, you know, selling investments in America, thinking that, you know, a nuclear weapon is going to go off in America. I mean, it's absurd to yeah. think that. But they, they still did because it was a narrative. So, you know, I agree with you, but at the same time, it's, it's vital that Trump secures a deal with China. And I have a suspicion they will. But the problem is that, it, you know, the only risk that I see with his campaign is one, if his taxes do get released and there is a big problem, um, mm -hmm. and two, if the Democrats throw a curveball at him and th they, they seem to be very good at doing that. So those are the only two yeah. things I'm really watching closely. If Trump, if Trump lands up not being able to run for president in 2020, the Dow Jones will take a monstrous fall. Huge, huge. Yeah. And, you know, I'm very unbiased. I don't support either. You know, I'm not American. But the thing is that yeah. I have to have the opinion of it, of saying, you know, exactly. where, where is the market going to go if this guy leaves or stays? Um, so, yeah, yeah. That, that is the only risk I'm looking at when it comes to the Dow Jones right now. Um, but everything else points in the direction that the market's going to return to the previous highs. And, you know, even if the market falls for the next four or five days, um, what I'd suggest is, you know, trading within that channel, um, right. trying to trying to develop the understanding of what what exactly is going to happen next on this level here, and then, you know, secondly, trying to make sure that if you are short selling the market, be very careful, because okay. although you, although you could win, I mean, there's nothing against the opinion that you, you will lose every single time, but it's just to make sure that you understand the long-term overview of it, if that makes sense. Right. Yeah. Okay, so that is a guy that I've been speaking with on Twitter. He was actually a follower of mine, and he was someone that, um, let me just, ah, it's actually nearly six o'clock in the evening, um, that, got to keep on going got to keep on working so he was a guy that we spoke with on twitter uh that wanted some advice on a trade on the dow jones he had just taken a trade that turned into a loss and he was sort of saying to me you know uh he'd like to find out a bit more um and he would need to get my advice on this you know as soon as possible and we do deal with people that go through the situation so you know i gave him my advice and like i said um you know, we will, I'm able to give one, you know, sort of free talk that lasted, you know, it was half an hour worth of talking, uh, where I'll just get online with, with whoever and just speak with them for half an hour, give them some advice, show them what I'm looking at in the market, and then I'd be able to send them three free trader talks. So every single week we do a Sunday traders talk with my whole network of students and traders where we send out a talk that is about 90 minutes, 60 to 90 minutes long, where we talk about the news in the markets, the trade ideas, trade uh, uh, trades that we already have open. And it just gives them an insight into, you know, what we're doing, why we do it, and, you know, what's happening. Because I even showed him my real trades. I showed him the transactions, the prices, etc., which is important because leading by example is much better than leading by instruction. Um, a lot of the time people can struggle with instruction, you know, if they don't have someone showing them how to do it and really showing them through their own practice, then sometimes they can be a bit fearful. So, you know, we'll send him all the details, we'll make sure he's got everything, but then it's down, it's down to him to, you know, take the time to decide if he wants to join the academy or not. And, you know, for anyone else out there that, uh, you know, jumps onto this video, has a look at it. That's really what we do. You know, I'm here to help people, you know, educating others makes me a better person as a trader and as an educator. But at the end of the day, um, our academy is specially built for this. Our academy is specially built for dealing with students day in, day out, week in, week out, and providing them with the best education we can possibly provide. Um, and it's something that very few educators in the market are actually worried about is what is the overall outcome of a trader's journey from beginner all the way through to professional. 
Um, most academies don't even care about that. Most academies care about, you know, a short program of a couple of weeks or maybe a month or two. They don't really care about the long-term trajectory. Um, and then also making sure that when the person starts out that, you know, they've got the right support system and they're not going to, uh, you know, lose money or get themselves hurt because that's really where they develop a soured opinion about the market. So for us, it's very important that not just uh, for our own group, and for our own company, but for people watching us and for even other educators that follow my work, it's very important that you dedicate yourself and you, and you work hard uh, to help others because if people are listening to your opinion, you need to make sure you're right, or at least as right as possible because when it comes to trading the market, you can't be perfectly right. But once again, you know, to anyone who wants to get in contact with me, you don't have to um, message me on Twitter multiple times before I get back to you. Um, you're more than welcome to get hold of us. Uh, study at msequitiestrading.com or www.msequitiestrading.com. Uh, you can find out more about how we train students in 28 countries around the world and also uh, how our training academy works and our traders talks as well. If you want access to the traders talks, like I said, you can get access to three free traders talks. Thereafter, you have to then join the academy or that's the end of the road for us. You know, we love, oh, I love helping people. I love being able to be there for people, but it does take a lot of time out of my day. Um, and at the end of the day, I need to be paid for my time and my time is as valuable as I'm sure all of yours is. Uh, so once again, thank you for tuning into this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Stay subscribed if you uh, really liked it. Also make sure to subscribe if uh, you wanna keep updated with weekly content but once again, everyone, I will see you in the next video. Cheers for now.